Hello people of the tubes, again I was useless and didn't record an intro to this, so this is the intro. We're going to be putting in a limited slip diff. Enjoy. Okay, first thing we need to do then is get the half shafts out. To do that, we need to get these off, um, which means the drum's got to come off first and this one's going to need a screwdriver. I do apologise for the noise, it's because I've got the heater going because it's the height of winter and it's freezing. When you have the tools but you just twat it anyway. It's coming. Let's get a rag. Clean hike. Reached from when I put them in last time. Oh, canal. Hmm. Gear oil. Last one was the left hand side. This one, right. Doesn't really matter, but I've just shown you the surprise. Okay, so the next thing is I've put the cap back on so no dirt gets in there and show you the new toy this so the diff I put the, the cover on it because obviously I'll get the LSD out now uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure these shafts fit inside it because there has been um, a couple of reports where when this has been heat tempered it's obviously made it smaller so these shafts will not fit in um, so I want to make sure it's not a problem otherwise I'm sending the bugger back and I haven't took that diff pieces then um, it gets pretty good reviews obviously as you can see it's not a quaif but a quaif is another 400 quid more I think but these seem to be getting a good review at the moment so and that's not within the MG realm um, because MG guys tend to stick to what they know and they won't change um, a little bit like MX5 people here to be honest and I'm not one of them so this part of the bench is nice and clean we'll get this out and we'll see if a shaft fits in Shafts. Don't really matter, the one with the grease on. Oh, fits in there perfect. Yep, and we'll flip the diff round, just make sure it does it on the other side. Should do. Yeah, perfect. That's fine. Wicked. Okay. Now what we need to do is test the lash, uh, which is that. So there should be a marker somewhere on the back of this, and it's possibly that. Well, a six or a nine? Or is that a six or a nine? And what's that, a ten? This makes it absolutely fucking stupid, but there is a, a um, it said that it's got engineering blue. Uh, in, the, in the Haynes manual, I believe it gives you a, 
an amount that it can be off by or in by. Well, that was next to useless. Nothing about the diff in there. And again, I'm sorry it's cold in here and I've got the blow heater going, but it is winter in the UK. But anyway, I'm going by 010, so I've set up the dial gauge, because this is in, in metric, that is in imperial. So, we've got 23, and it's not quite on a zero, so 23023, which on the right is about nine, just over nine and a half thou. I mean, it could be that's not quite on, but that's well within tolerance. So I don't think we need to worry about that. So what we'll do now is check the run out to make sure that's not got a problem there's nothing wrong with that because I will need to check it back when it's on this okay so let's check for the run out which wasn't quite on zero then I think it's around about as long as it's less than 0 0.05 thou or 5 thou 0 0.3 Right, I need to mark these. So we'll mark this one in blue, so it's the crown wheel side, because I've marked the bearing as crown wheel side, because they're obviously uh, milled out for each side. So we'll mark it blue. There we go. Made in England. Absolutely stinks. Put it in there, sniff. Nice. So, the shims are in, existing shims are in, um, on the correct side, because obviously they are sided and there's a certain amount of preload, so you've got to make sure you get the right ones on the right side, so I just marked them with a bit of blue. Let's get the diff, which has now got the crown wheel, as you saw, bolted back up. Again, make sure the bearing caps are the, for the correct side, because they are milled to size. Just made them shims drop in, haven't I? Should it's not quite over. There we go. Okay, 
I'll rotate it a bit. Right, and again, the caps themselves are also sided, so make sure you make a note of which side they came off. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. Now as Pudding says, any more than twice and you're just playing with yourself. So what we're looking for is about when we did the original measurement um, from what's obviously scribed on the back of the crown wheel is 0 0.10 0 0 .10, I believe uh, 0 0.10 0 um, which works out as around about 0 0.23 mil and this is a millimetre gauge, obviously. So let's see. This doesn't feel like it's got enough lash to me. Yeah, so we're getting 0 0.09. Getting down with the dip. Let's turn this off for a moment. Okay guys, as you can see, I've got more shims. Um, I ended up buying quite a few different ones. We've got the two original ones, which oddly enough were exactly the same size, which is unheard of considering the stamp points are different, A and B, or a B and A. Um, got 0, 2, 3, 0, 4, 5, they are too big. Then I bought a 0, 3, 7 and 0, 2, 9, too small. So at this point, as you saw, the original shims, which were both of equal size, which is a bit weird, um, created not enough lash by a massive amount, really. I then ordered, by mistake, a 023 for the left-hand side and a 045, which created about um, 030 millimetres of travel, so five out. So obviously there wasn't enough lash there, so I um, bought a 0137 and a 0129, which actually was a little bit better. It gave in millimetres uh, 015 millimetres, which actually isn't enough. Um, I needed 025. So we needed to go up another step, which on the right hand side, the largest shim is available, which is a 0141, which was what I was thinking we needed now. Um, obviously, this is now getting expensive, but again, it's my fault because of the DTI gauge, really, and my head was just getting blown away with converting it all. The problem is the smaller version of that shim, which was 0127, isn't actually available. You can't get them. So I had two choices, get it milled down, uh, the 0129, or somebody on the forums was saying just use glass paper, go very slowly and in a circular motion on a flat surface piece of glass basically and just slowly sand it down. Um, also Gregor mentioned exactly the same thing to do. Um, so that's basically what we did. Okay guys, right, next set of shims are in. So let's see what this one, we're looking for about 025. Oh yeah, I don't know whether you can see that, but that is on the money. I mean, give or take, because this DTI is probably not right. I mean, we're looking, the stamp point is um, 010, so 0 0.010, which works out at about 025 now of mil. Now, I measured 023, like I was saying before, when it was in millimetres. But the fact now that we're getting this might be because the shims were wrong before. Um, let's just zero it. To around about zero. So we're getting 0 0.25, which is 
what she should be. So that's, it's nigh on. I mean, we'll take into consideration, like I say, that might not be bang on. Who knows about AEB tools? Never heard of them before. Um, so uh, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Obviously, what I will do now is I will move the DTI gauge to this side and measure, and then I'll go to the middle and measure just to be doubly sure. Okay, so let's zero this. And I would say 023, 024, 024. It's just 023. So, third and final time we're recording. Yeah, we are recording. Third and final time 024, 024. 0249025 I mean you've always got to have a bit of slop and the oil will take up most of this anyway so I would say that's all good right now we're going to do run out which I did a run out and 0 0.04 max um, that's in mil so what I have done is, if we just pop it over there, if I rotate the diff, what I have done is made a marker. The only reason is because if it's not right, we'll take this off, move it, put it back on again. Because um, 0.04 was what I got last time, so we need to reset that so it touches that side face. Obviously, where the etching is, it's going to make it jump a bit, but We'll take that into consideration anyway. Let's put that in place. Okay, so I have gone round once already, but let's do it again. So I've, obviously you can see my marker that I've just made. And we've zeroed it. Now I know that that was slightly over when I just zeroed it. So I'm expecting close to 0 0.05, which is that first long marker. Um, but let's let's rotate. And I've noticed there's a, there's a slight mark in the ring gear there. So it's going to jump on that mark. Obviously, you can't do anything about that. Um, let's make sure there's no dirt. So I'm going to take multiple measurements of this. So, yeah, there's 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 something just... Yeah, you see that? I don't know whether you can see it. I don't know if the camera's showing it up, but there's there's like a, a slight gouge in the edge of that ring gear. Um, obviously, that's always been there, so I'm not too fussed about that. And it's not made it jump really over the five that it was, so... Obviously, there's another one there as well. Yeah, I can actually feel that one with my finger. The tolerance is uh, previously was 0 0.04. And we're coming up to the stamping on the back. Which I know has got make will make it jump because it's on the even surface. I'm just going up over to the stamping. So I will, make, I will be making multiple passes of this. getting back to the marker so we didn't go over the 0 0.04 apart from that one place where I noticed the gouge but what we'll do is we'll move the, the caliper or the DTI gauge sorry and we'll put it onto the, sort of this face and do it again so the last measurement this take was the run out now I have adjusted this and we're getting about 0 0.04 which is what I originally got when I on the OEM diff um, yeah, so I'm getting around about the same, the maximum uh, run out you can tolerate. So it says in the owner's manual is 0 0.05. So at the moment, 004, we are going to come across the um, scribe markings for the crown wheel at the moment. But yeah, she, she 
0.04 doesn't tend to run out any more than that and then yeah we're going to cross, we're going to cross the scribe markings now so it does jump about a bit um, so again and back to zero so I would say we're, we're within spec and it wasn't exactly on zero anyway so you can give or take a bit right so what I need to do now is clean it all up um, re the bolts and she's she's pretty much ready to go I think we'll we'll uh, we'll put this video to a close with how we are at the moment and then I think in the next video we'll put everything together um, put all this in after cleaning and we can uh, start obviously putting it back on the car and probably put the springs and everything on as well so I hope you enjoyed the video and I shall see you in the next one take care